Hello, uh, my name is Sethra Lavode. I also go by the dialectical Black Rose. Uh, I was Hyperion for five whole years. Hi, I'm Crystal Dumont, also known as Chronic, or Six Dark Six Greetings Six. I was Hyperion for five years. Hi, my name is Nick. You probably know me as Wrath. I was Hyperion for five years. My name is Friction Primes Algarius, and I was Hyperion for about two years. Well, how long was I? Let's see, 2018, about five years or so. Five years almost. Hey there, I'm Jewel. Um, some of you might know me as Hoel. And I've been a Hyperion for a year, and I learned about it two years ago. My name is Adam Norris. You might recognize me by my online nickname, Epsilon Blue. I used to be Hyperion for a little more than two years. How long were you Hyperion? I became involved in Hyperionism in around 2020, so approximately two years. Hello, my name is Kai. I was Hyperion for five years. Hi, my name's Maddie Kling. Also go by the name Human Being. That's my artist name. Um, how long was I Hyperion? I guess I started my journey with Hyperionism at the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019 back when Morg only had a few thousand followers. Um, I was really intrigued by some of his first videos that he published and um, that's what led me to purchasing all his material. So I was around Hyperionism since its inception in 2017, I believe. So around five years. Good day. My name is Amy Shmamey, and I am not Hyperion. I discovered Hyperionism about three years ago. G'day monads, my name's Adam Carl, also known as Anti-Crisis, and I was Hyperion for about two and a half years. Hi, my name is Anthony, also known as Zero to One. I was Hyperion for five years, in which I was a Middle Circle member for the most part. Hey everyone. Jack Gerard here. How long was I Hyperion? I never really considered myself Hyperion. I had already been studying the material before Mark came on the scene, so I, I have always considered myself an Illuminist since I discovered this material. My name is Z Interstar. I was Hyperion for about five years. Hi, my name is Ren. I go by Starscore or Starscore Zero online. Um, how long was I Hyperion? I was Hyperion for a year and a half, maybe two years at the very most, around the 2018, 2017 to 2019, I can't really remember. Alright, number one, how long were you Hyperion for? Uh, I would say that I was superficially Hyperion for about five years. Um, superficially because it was always my intention of spreading Hyperionism as a means to presenting the paradigm of ontological mathematics, as espoused by Mike Hockney and his compatriots to a wider audience. In reality, I've been an Illuminist for over a decade. Hello, my name is uh, Karina, also known as Venus Abraxas, and I am not Hyperion. How long was I Hyperion? Um, well, I was a Hyperion for about five years, since 2017, uh, is when I joined. Hi, my name is Scott, uh, also known as Scott Von Fire, and I was Hyperion for five years. Hello, it is Julie, the angry mad Scott, the ex-Hyperion, and I'm here to tell you why I'm not Hyperion anymore, and want nothing to do with it. So here goes, how long was I involved? Well, too bloody long, let's be honest, too long. But technically it was about three and a half years, I would say. 
Hello, my name is Gina. I have lent portions of my identity to Hyperionism for a little bit over five years. Um, and I've decided that I'm just going to refer to that as my flop era from here on out. My name is Christina and I was Hyperion for five and a half years, although it wasn't called that back then. It started when I read Book Zero in February of 2017, and there was a letter in the book that directed me to a website called The Order of One. Through this website, I went through trial, uh, which some of you who've been around for a while might remember. And after six months, Corey invited me to join The Order, which I suppose you can think of as their inner circle. What drew me into Hyperionism was the thought of actually changing the world. You see, I am a single mother of three, and my entire life I struggled to survive. So I like the idea of changing the world and for everyone so we don't have to slave away. What drew me in was the Is God the Devil video. I had a crush on Mark back when they were on the AMC show, and I had liked their page back then and didn't think anything of them ever since until that video. And I started following religiously. What drew me into Hyperionism was that video, uh, Do Higher Entities Exist? Uh, I thought it was amazing. You know, so I followed Morg on Instagram and Morg uh, reached out to me uh, because they saw that I was making music and they said, you should make some Hyperion music. And I was like, uh, what's Hyperion? You know, so I, I went on to Morg's website and bought book zero and uh, it all started there. What drew me to Hyperionism was that I thought I found a movement and a knowledge system for changing the world and understanding reality rationally. Actually, it was one of his videos on meritocracy. I can't remember which one, but uh, his willingness to change the world was what had me interested from the beginning. So, what drew me into Hyperionism? I grew up in a Christian family. I was spiritual at a young age. I rebelled against that, went to atheism and sci science, and after that, that was miserable. <laughs> and I went to mysticism, and that was confusing. So by the time I had learned about uh, ontological mathematics from a morgue video titled, How Do We Know the Soul Exists? Uh, yeah, I was hooked. I knew about the PSR and Euler's equation. So much of things instantly made sense. It was like a rush, a, eu a euphoric rush of knowledge, uh, a drug in the form of knowledge. Um, I just wanted to be a part of that. Um. What drew me into Hyperionism was the first few videos I was watching from Morg made a lot of sense to me. Because all my life I've been contemplating concepts, who we are, where we are, what we are, and why we are here. And since Morg was basically talking about that and the meaning of existence, I thought, great, I found somebody who thinks the same way I do and has the answers and solutions I've been searching for my entire life. So I found out about Hyperionism through um, Instagram. Um, I posted a picture of my Satanic Bibles and I got a comment from Mori that said, liked. So that's when I found his social media. This was in like 2014 and I hadn't um, gotten involved at that time. It wasn't until later on um, in like 2020 that I got involved. What drew me to Hyperionism was the um, why God is actually the devil, uh, which was Morg's video speaking out against Christianity. And the reason why I was drawn to Hyperionism from this video is because I was an atheist and I was vehemently against Christianity um, and I was annoyed by uh, Christians and so I was looking for any ammo that I could get 
against um, uh, Christianity. What drew me into Hyperionism was um, the fact of synthesizing shadow and light in ourselves, the philosophical concepts, the mathematics, the ontological mathematics. I thought Moore was the herald of all of this information. Um, I believed every word of it at the start. So I thought this guy was charismatic, he was genuine, um, and all the, all the material that he created was his own. So what drew me to Hyperionism was the excitement of having finally found an online community focused on the revolutionary system of ontological mathematics, which was something that I had been studying for a few years prior. Morg, or Corey I should say, and I were part of a members only goth community in Hollywood. This community was full of brilliant artists and I, tr I tried to support the work of as many people in this community that my pocketbook would allow. When I became aware of fellow mo member Corey's book, I bought it. The material blew me away. Uh, I've been atheist for many years, but I believe that there's more to this world than existing one minute and not existing the next minute. So um, the material made perfect sense to me and I was fully on board from day one. I've been diving deep into philosophy channels on YouTube when I came across Morg's videos. They definitely caught my attention. In retrospect, when you consider the original source of this material, it's no wonder I found it so compelling. After reading the amazing God series by Mike Hockney and the books that followed that following year, I came to social media and was drawn to Hyperion's early videos promoting the meritocratic revolution, idealist philosophy, and of course, ontological mathematics. What drew me to Hyperionism? The ACPI. They sanctioned Morg to be their spokesperson in the public scene. That's why. It's the only reason why. Uh, I was first introduced to Morg through the Freak Show TV series. I was very inspired by their stunts and their whole like dark circus image. So I started looking more into them and I found their original YouTube videos uh, but were a lot of uh, stuff about personal development and leaving religion, how Christianity is child abuse and how to break out of that and become your own god. And uh, these things really resonated with me having been raised in a strict Christian household and I was still pretty young and I was still living with my mother who is Christian and I was fully questioning everything and like just starting to come into myself and learn to express myself and I was uh, getting up the courage to finally leave religion and uh, Morg's work really helped me out with that. What drew me to Hyperionism was really the sense of community. Um, just really having a group of like-minded people with who I could talk, whether about the material or about anything else really. Uh, two, what drew you to Hyperionism? What drew me to Hyperionism was the fact that it was initially intended to be a vehicle for Illuminism slash ontological mathematics. If Hyperionism did not proclaim logic and reason as its starting foundations, I probably would have never even got involved with the so-called movement. What drew me to Hyperionism? Um, I was first part of an Illuminist study group on uh, Facebook since 2016. Then I was recruited to the secret group which was called the Jacobin on uh, Facebook. That's where I met other Illuminists that were like-minded individuals. Um, and that's where I also met Corey Morg uh, in that secret group. He had posted if any one of us would like to contribute to his movement and what skills and talents do we have. Uh, I was happy to contribute some of my artistic expressions since I had been in the business of entertainment and he accepted my contributions to Hyperionism. Hyperionism was this uh, relatively new online community uh, of like-minded individuals that were discussing the very same topics that my band Code of Conduct had been discussing in our weekly rehearsals for several years prior. We were discussing the New World Order meritocracy, 
and ontological mathematics, among other things. It was all material from the inspiring works of Mike Hockney and the other writers of the PI. Hyperionism was an interesting newsstand outside of this library of illuminous knowledge. It offered us somewhere to network, somewhere to grow, and to become more active. I was pulled in hook, line, and sinker. What drew me to it was purely because as soon as I saw Morg on Instagram, which was in about 2018, I instantly recognised the PI material. Um, he was talking about the nature of reality, being mathematical, etc. And I was like, oh, that's, that's the PI's work. I know that. So that's what drew me to it. What drew me to Hyperionism? Um, back in 2017, I saw an ad on Facebook for Morg, and he was discussing the eternal nature of mind. Um, that was a concept and a subject that I was very, very much into at the time. Um, so I immediately made sure to start catching his live streams, which were 3 a.m. On Instagram so that was also the only way you could get his book at that time um, was to stay up until 3 a.m. and then um, wait for this little tiny one-hour window so that you could get this information that you just weren't gonna find anywhere else yeah what drew me to Hyperionism was the section of Book Zero called The Dark Secret, which covered topics like um, the infinite and eternal mind, deconstructing reality, and um, energy and matter. Uh, then I started watching Corey's videos, and that expanded on these topics. Those videos are very different from the videos they've been creating lately and the live streams they've done in the past few years. I wanted to promote this material because I thought that our goal was to change the world and make it a better place. I really wanted to help wake up the world and change it for the better, like they were promoting. What made me get involved, uh, you know, with Morg asking me to make music, so I did. Uh, I thought Book Zero was pretty cool, you know, so uh, I did. And I made some, you know, dubstep thing that uh, had more examples, you know, in between, uh, like a cadential more example. And uh, Morg shared it with uh, their audience, so that was pretty cool. And I was, you know, I was just, I was excited that some uh, ex pseudo celebrity uh, was paying attention to my music and, and sharing it with their audience. It, it was, it made me really happy. That's. That's how I got uh, involved. I thought Hyperionism was a system about understanding reality through ontological mathematics and creating a new world based on reason and merit. What made me get involved? The promise of change. Nothing more. I started getting more involved with Hyperionism. Um, I felt a sense of duty to share this knowledge, to learn more about it. I learned about self-actualization, I wanted to be better, I wanted to live a life of quality. There was a lot of good values being taught to me, um, and I also wanted a community of like-minded people. I felt like a loner, I felt like an outsider, I felt weird, <laughs> so it, I had high hopes. What made me get involved in Hyperionism? Well. I noticed the world was a really bad place and needed to become a better, smarter place, and I thought Hyperionism was the vehicle from which we could make it happen. So I became Hyperion and did everything I could to help spread Hyperionism. I got involved in Hyperionism because of the system that it offered. Um, with the rational conclusions it came to through physics, through art math, um, psychology, where before, you know, I was raised Catholic, uh, that didn't sit well with me. I then went 
to Satanism, and I didn't like that either. Um, I went to spiritualism, which was better, but it just didn't have the answers. So when I found Hyperionism, it really gave me that full system to see the world differently and, and understand. What made me get involved was actually the uh, watching other videos of Morgue and how there was a call to action. And then, so I went to the website, um, read through their list of things that they stand for. I don't usually do stuff like this, but I bought his books. Uh, first, The Metaphorical Suicide, um, and then Book Zero. There was a call to action to Book Zero to add someone on Facebook. Um, I added that person. They added me to the then secret group that had maybe like 80 people in it at the time. And um, yeah, I, I got involved getting into debates, asking questions. Um, and eventually uh, through also discussing, discussing Hyperionism uh, in debates with people around me, I was featured in a podcast uh, where I kind of threw in some Hyperion uh, topics. Morg saw it, sent me a message asking for me to make videos. What made me get involved? Well, after knowing all of the knowledge that his books taught me, I wanted to get a part, or be a part of this movement. Um, and I wanted to see it worldwide. Um, I guess, um, I wanted to spread the message. I, I wanted to start my own Australian Hyperionism movement here in Hobart. And so I created an Australian Hyperionism page and um, I came up with the idea um, for Hyperfest, which would be a festival f to bring all Hyperions together to then turn it into a meritocratical movement if that makes sense um i had all these ideas and i wanted to be a part of it um so i got involved because i didn't just want to be a passive learner um like just soaking up information on my own i wanted to get active i wanted to interact with intelligent people who understood the system of aunt math or at least were trying to understand it I met with Corey several times to discuss how we could help the movement utilizing my strengths. I originally got involved via the Outer Circle Facebook page and by about mid-2020 I was posting and interacting a lot. The following year in April 21 I took the Middle Circle test and got accepted. From that point on I was immersed. I felt like I'd come home to my long lost family. Someone who is introverted and kind of weird like me, the whole Hyperion culture thing wasn't just cool and dark, but also had the whole underlying rational, mathematical, philosophical allure. It was very appealing, but the appeal was also the community and what I would call the illusion of unity. I believed Hyperionism was a true meritocratic movement. I believe I could assist promoting, educating and as well as defending the God series subject matter that Hyperionism was built from. What made me get involved? The ACPI's message of freeing humanity from the yoke of the old world order and Abrahamism. What's not to like about that? You talk about freeing humanity, Morg's not doing that. I got involved in Hyperionism because I wanted to be part of a community of like-minded individuals who rejected religion and were working to build a better world and I wanted to help spread this information and help enact change. Um, I was also a huge fan of Morg and I wanted to get their attention so I started heavily promoting Morg and also uh, creating a lot of my own Hyperion content. So what made me um get involved. Um, again, I'd say it's the sense of community. Um, 
that made me get involved. Um, I wanted my goal when I joined Hyperion groups, when I uh, started adding people that identified as Hyperion, and when I started getting uh, started identifying as Hyperion. Um, my goal was really to um, strengthen that sense of community, to just be a member, basically. Just be a member of the community. And, yeah. Three, what made you get involved? What made me get involved was my aim of spreading the good news of ontological mathematics. Since Hyperionism was meant to be a vehicle for spreading ontological mathematics, I figured Getting involved would be the best way of achieving my aim, spreading ontological mathematics far and wide to as large an audience as possible. Made me get involved uh, was uh, watching his videos, uh, topics about reincarnation, higher entities. It was a dumbed down version of what the AC writers of the Pythagorean Illuminati wrote in their amazing Book of God series, uh, but I was still intrigued. I was able to use my Sex for Salvation ideas in those short vids um, when promoting his book, Path of Shadow, with the love and uh, sex theme of his book. Um, again, this was all original content of the Illuminous books from the Pythagorean Illuminati. Uh, it was just watered down in, in, in Morg's version of his books. Um, I also got involved in uh, activism and promoted Hyperionism in every action I took to go out there, like flyers and for public banking at City Hall, uh, also uh, merging that with meritocracy um, and Hyperionism, uh, uh, anti-Trump protests, also bringing in the meritocracy with that, um, and so on, even putting uh, the Hyperion Flyers inside and outside of any Catholic church I could find, <laughs> near me, uh, placing flyers about Hyperionism in New York City libraries. Uh, so yeah, I got busy, okay? Um, and hardly ever got any real appreciation from Morg, Morg Corey <laughs> on that, but uh, an occasional like here and there on Instagram and Facebook, like what the fuck? Being a single parent of two and working long hours for minimal pay, I really wanted to create a better world and a better future for my children. I saw Hyperionism as the perfect place to do this, so I contacted Morg, who excitedly welcomed the idea of my band writing Hyperion music for the movement. Within a day or so, Susan Mitchell had sent me a bunch of information, including files uh, that contained all the artwork, uh, the logos, um, all the Hyperion gear that I needed for putting into, say, music videos, uh, any content I was creating. I really thought that the more I could do, the more I guess I was uh, shaping the world. <laughs> What a fucking joke, right? What made me get involved the same thing? I thought he had the backing of the PI. I thought that was he was the vehicle that we're using to get the information out there. And although I didn't particularly like him or his vibe or aesthetic or whatever, it was a bit dark and depressing for me. I didn't think it was maybe the best way to do things. But I was like, oh well, if this if this is you know what they've sanctioned to to get the information out there then I'll back it up, I'll support it. <clears throat> so that's what made me get involved. What made me get involved in Hyperionism? Um, the, the concept of positive liberty and meritocracy, the tenets of meritocracy, uniting the working class, of course the ontological mathematics at the heart of it, but what really, really drove me um, was the drive for equality for every human on earth, regardless of their gender, their sex preferences, who they're born to, um, just based on your merit. Um, so yeah, that, that was initially what made me get involved. What made me get involved in Hyperionism was the math. 
Uh, Corey reached out to me while I was still in trial and asked me if I would be interested in helping with a math project. We decided to create a video series called Introduction to Hyperion Mathematics. We had a lot of conversations about it and we decided that they would film me teaching the derivation of the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. And I was really excited to use my teaching experience to participate in this project. Um, but we only ever got about uh, 10 episodes um, out before the project was abandoned. They're still on an old Hyperionism YouTube channel somewhere, but we never really got past the trigonometric prerequisites. So well, the red flags that I notice is the big one is after five years of being in this movement, it has basically, it's gone nowhere. It, the movement has become stagnant. Um, I thought by now that we would have more events, more content creators that we would be pushing out into the world and making more changes, but the only thing I see is, is Corey on camera. Corey in the spotlight. He never has any guest stars on his show. It's just one star of the show, and that's Corey himself. The red flags I had was the whole vibe of, if you don't listen to me, you don't know shit. They never gave away their source material, like how they got this information, except for like, um, philosophers. Red flags? Oh, a ton of them. A ton of red flags. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, I discovered the ontological mathematics as, as the basis, as the source material for Hyperionism. So, you know, I always chalked it up to, well, you know, uh, Morg's, uh, Morg's not perfect, you know, um, the, the way they handle things isn't perfect, but I really believe in this cause. I really believe that ontological mathematics is, needs to be spread to the world. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry too much about all these red flags. Well, perhaps I should have. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a red flag, for example, is um, Morg would never take any criticism. I always, you know, uh, the first thing I said to Morg was, hey, I really like what you're doing here, but isn't it kind of weird that your website is just a, like a huge picture of you? It was at the time when you go to IamHyperion.com. It's just, you know, Morg standing there half naked. And I was, I was like, isn't this weird? And Morg responded, uh, well, it, it works better this way. You know, uh, we, we've, we've tried things and it works best. This is going to be best. That was the, the first red flag immediately. But uh, I always just thought, you know, hey, uh, this guy knows the aunt math uh, much better than I do. So I'm going to I'm going to have his back. I may have seen some red flags along the way, but the one red flag that did make me reevaluate and read without the mob, there is no circus was Rowan and Christina's departure. If the most intelligent minds of the community were denouncing Hyperionism, I knew I didn't have the full story. Red flags. There were so many. One of the big ones was Morg, Morg, and more Morg, and nothing else. It was quite tiresome. All right, red flags. So when I went into the streams, I noticed often um, it was more so about community and it wasn't focused on the knowledge, which was the community that I was looking for. I was looking for people who wanted to know things, wanted to philosophize, wanted to self-actualize. And it just seemed like they were just happy being pretty mediocre and just getting the, just being with their friends and hanging out in the stream. And yeah, just, I thought it was stupid <laughs> and missing the, the point. Also, I noticed people were like in love with Morg, literally, like they worshipped him, maybe. I don't know if they worshipped him, but they definitely saw him as like some kind of like God sent humanity's gift. <laughs> I don't know, some kind of messiah. And I almost 
I, I don't know. I don't want to project or anything, but it just seemed like he almost... That's what he felt like uh, for a while. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just not noticed a lot of followers were just, like, not what I expected. Um, well, in my two years in Hyperionism, I noticed that way too many people were leaving Hyperionism with horror stories behind them, so... After a while, it just kept adding up and adding up. All these little clues, it's like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Maybe something's going on here. I also noticed after a while that Hyperionism, the movement, was basically nothing more than just morgue. Morgue in front of a computer screen, making money, making videos. And us watching videos, giving them money. The entire movement is just morgue making videos and making money. That's it. What red flags did you notice? So the first thing that I noticed was the information was sometimes hard to find. Um, it There wasn't like a detailed like list on the next steps um, after you read the books. it I remember actually posting about this in the Outer Circle on Facebook because I wish there was like... Um, like um, a guide to you know like book to books to read next or what's next steps to take there was never a guide on what to do after you read those books that he that he created the second thing that I noticed was um, sometimes in my personal opinion I felt that the community seemed a little toxic at times um it was there was always a con it seemed like there was a constant struggle for like attention um from morgue or the mods or sometimes even like it seemed like some of the members weren't guiding it was maybe more of like flexing their ego or who was the smartest um i sometimes got that feeling sometimes um, the next thing I noticed is like the soup, the the book readings. I loved the book readings. They were great when they first came out. They were, I remember that they were two hours long. Um, but over time, like his videos became longer with super chats and waiting in the chat and hanging out in the chat, where it seemed like it just got diluted. The number one red flag that I noticed right off the bat is that no one would ever debate with you in the groups. People felt, uh, when I spoke to Hyperians, the vast majority in the groups were completely um, clueless to, to how to respond to my questions, save for a select few who were moderators who um, I would debate with. And they're the ones that exposed me to a lot of the literature from the Pythagorean Illuminists and uh, the Armageddon Conspiracy website. Um, so the, uh, a red flag was, you know, no one wants to debate with you. Instead of debating with you, they'll just send you a book link. Um, and there was only a few people who would be able to debate with you and um, be able to actually uh, bring up the topics and explain them thoroughly. And those were mods who were more Illuminist than Hyperion. Another red flag was that when I joined, there every um, there was a alternative scene or like subculture scene. I don't know what it's called, but like goth alternative scene. And I had never been a goth or alternative. I was just a hipster nerd, an uh, atheist hipster nerd. And so like, uh, but I've never been someone to judge a book by, by its cover. And um, my general exposure to more was through the videos. And um, I did read the, uh, start reading the series shortly after uh, joining the group. So, uh, which is another red flag. It's uh, another red flag was that all of the true knowledge uh, all of the information of what exactly Morg is talking about, that was found in outside material. So that's another red flag. All of the, everything about ontological mathematics and all of um, all the perspectives on certain issues that Hyperionism talks about and, and what uh, Morg talks about in the video, all of that 
was found in outside material. Borg's books did not include any of the information about ontological mathematics or the nat true nature of reality other than the very basic uh, that, you know, reality is mathematical. How, why, and anything like that was an outside material, and that should have been a red flag for me. What red flags did I notice, if any? Um, one major one was I wanted to be a part of the moderators of the middle circle. Um, and I had been in talks with Susan Mitchell, um, and I really wanted to take the test and uh, enact this hyperfest idea that I had as a stepping stone to turning it into a movement. Um, but the major red flag that I had was one day in the outer circle Facebook page, I made a post and I said, can we please not call it the cult of reason? Can we call it the movement of reason? That would change the whole direction of the way this all goes. Instantly, I got banned. Um, but that was a major red flag for me. And all my ideas were shut down. And I realized this wasn't about the movement at all. It was just about Morg. There were a lot of red flags over the years. And I basically just suppressed them. Uh, the main one being that like with our content creation um, that we were creating for the Hyperion source, um, it was always being steered away from the explicit mention of the authors who discovered the system of knowledge that Hyperionism was built on. So I was constantly being urged not to quote from the wrong books for fear of deplatforming and all that. Basically, we had to water our message down like so badly that it was lost to Morg's own personal issues, which themselves took front and center of the movement. Um, another red flag was that Hyperionism, it didn't speak to the working class at all. It was more about saving oppressed minorities who didn't even ask for Morg's help to begin with. I noticed just a few months in that some Hyperions were aggressive and borderline bullies when it came to spreading the word of Hyperionism. Uh, I have a large following on social media and some Hyperions were suggesting that I change my focus from non-monogamy to Hyperionism, uh, which was not something I was willing to do at the time. So I started pulling back then. Red flags, fuck. Hindsight is a bitch. Where were the debates? Where was the Ubermensch Hyperion dismantling Christians and scientists alike with their superior reason and critical thinking skills? Where were the interviews? Why did the Hyperion source turn on the super chats? Weren't they getting paid by Corey? Five years of videos and live streams and where was the actual progress? Remember the Hyperion movies that they took down? Remember the outro to the second movie? It was a voiceover with a hardcore reference to Morg and his rise to watcher status within the ranks of a secret society. Again, in retrospect, I understand why they removed these movies from the Hyperion Source website. The explanation was they're outdated. Outdated my ass. Then finally, when the two best moderators up and left, I switched straight into what the fuck mode. That's when I started to dig and read. Rabbit hole, indeed. Uh, where do I start? Three main points. One, the lack of defending meritoric values, the philosophical foundations, ontological mathematics, was practically non-existent right from the beginning. Any defense was held in contempt. Many written complaints, both direct and public, were ignored or just dampened down. At one point, Corey himself created the secret TRT anti-troll group in which encouraged a positive anti-troll. It was anything but. In fact, Corey's suggestion was to encourage promoting more morgue content rather than tackle the issues head on. It didn't last long, of course. It had no impact whatsoever. Two, the lack of real world boost to the ground activism became apparent next. Some were actively spreading knowledge off their own backs and funds, mind you. Some were often scrutinized and dampened down in the fear of spreading the wrong message. 
and other hardliners who understood the message well, well, there's a fear of, it's not a good look, according to Corey. Clearly there was no round tables on these matters. Everything had to be scrutinised and approved by Corey and Susan. It's a dictatorship. Three, the latter years, the content began to die dramatically. The lack of rational idealist and meritoric values had practically disappeared, especially from the morgue official content which declined into a confusing mishmash of woke gobbledygook. The audience in which Corey began to attract had zero interest in the hard subjects or any real education subject for that matter. I do know several Hyperians like myself backed with my Hockney's God series and related books hung on to the bitter end hoping to step up and bring some more smart and the fuck up important topics to the table. What red flags did I have? Well, Right from the very beginning, when Moore came on the scene, even when he was sanctioned by the PI, I had two Illuminous friends that did not like the direction this was going. They did not like Moore from the very beginning. So, right from the get-go, I've had a question mark hanging over my head in regards to Morg. Mike Hockney is another red flag. Morg would actively try to crush patrons on Patreon when anybody ever brought up Mike Hockney in the beginning. He was erasing messages, blocking patrons. He did not want people knowing about Mike Hockney. You talk about a red flag there. You read his books and then you block him? Susan, she's another one. I communicated with her one time. Where's the best place to communicate with Hyperions? She said, go to YouTube. I wasn't really aware of Discord. Okay, so she tells me to go to YouTube and they're one million people, but she ignores Discord. She kept that from me, but she sure took my money. She didn't want me around. That's fine, because I don't want to be around you. Karen Shaw is another red flag. Years ago, Morg blocked Karen Shaw from supporting him on Patreon, which is bullshit. Karen Shaw has always been a very strong advocate of the ACPI all the way back to the God Series book club, all the way back, years before Morg. So uh, I started to notice a lot of red flags, um, the first being that there was really not much movement in this movement. Uh, Morg clearly didn't have a plan for enacting real change. Um, whenever someone would ask about the next steps, he would just be like, uh, make sure you read my books, share my videos, like the video, uh, donating helps a lot. But it was all about growing his channel, getting him more viewership and more money. And there was, um, <clears throat> he always emphasized that community was really important, but it didn't feel like there was much of a community with the live streams because it was just um, Morg on the screen and all of us in the chat kind of competing for attention and it was only those who super chatted that really got their questions answered. Um, and then also uh, during the lockdown, uh, Morg was getting a lot of requests for book recommendations and instead of uh, giving solid recommendations and letting people uh, go sit with the material on our own, uh, he decided to start the book reading live streams where he would uh, read the book to us and give his own interpretation. Uh, these streams often contained very little of the actual book and just a lot of Morg going off on tangents and making sure to tie everything into his system and emphasizing where authors are wrong. And you know, there was no debates, there was never anybody else on the channel. It was all, uh, I'm Morg and I know the answer to existence and here's where you're wrong and here's where you're wrong. What red flags did I notice, if any? Um, I'd say the main red flag was just... Actually, I'd say there was two. Um, the first red flag was how difficult it was to get into, like, the middle circle, like, the inner circle and all, all these things. Like, it was really... Like, I never really personally got a chance, even though I read a lot of the the material books, like, um, I remember, can't, well, can't remember exactly which group or which circle, but it was required to, uh, have read the books by Morg, and I thought that was weird also, because the books by Morg are 100% inspired by ontological maths, and the God series, and all, 
all its predecessors, really. So it was always weird to me how, how, like, the source material was never really, having been to university and having to, like, always write down my sources when doing papers, uh, it was kind of weird to me that sources were never mentioned. So that was a red flag. Um, and yeah, I'd say the last red flag would be um, just just Morg being the face of a movement that was supposed to be promoting um, like individuality and what the individual can bring to the plate, can bring to the table. Um, so yeah, it was weird to me that it was a singular person that was kind of celebrated versus kind of everyone. I mean, for sure, there's always going to be, like, leading, um, figures within a movement, but it's, it's just weird to me that it was one. And then finding out that the other leading faces, the basically the mods were not paid was also it was probably the last uh thing that made me just go yeah that's just not right for what red flags did you notice if any uh well more or cory however the fuck you pronounce it uh was the bi biggest red flag to start with um this was the supposed face of the hyperion movement so-called a former freak on a freak show who somehow managed to gain sanction from the AC slash PI created a front organization for the spread of ontological mathematics. Another red flag was the production of Morg's work on ontological mathematics, his book, which was sophomoric in comparison to the God series and Truth series. First red flag was a certain someone I was meeting up with for activism and meetups who seemed to be strangely obsessed with Corey like a fan. Um, this person uh, should have only been concerned with the knowledge system we were promoting. Uh, I mean, that was the real reason why I was doing all of this. Uh, and I understood this person needed a push to do these things with me, and so I did give her a push and inspired her. Uh, but the interest seemed to be more focused on uh, Morg's hair. But she she wasn't the only one that I had noticed. Um, many in this so-called movement were like that, and that is uh, that was starting to turn me off because Corey never called it out. And I think his narcissism was attracting all other types of narcs. Uh, into his cult. Uh, they were so delusional with the mythos. Uh, the whole point of the mythos was to direct them to the logos. And when one gets to finally understand logic and reason, uh, they would become more consciously aware. Uh, but that didn't seem to be the case. Uh, the interest was more about his appearance and how majestic as fuck he appeared. Yeah, celeb worship cringe indeed. Um, another red flag was the super chats on uh, his YouTube live feed. Many were competing with others and trying to upstage each other with higher donations for validation and a pat on the back. Um, and also your question would never be answered unless you gave him money on the super chats. So uh, I also noticed on YouTube live with Corey that when I asked him about remembering past lives and or telepathy, uh, he would say only highly evolved beings could do this, as if to say only his chosen ones or maybe only he could access those things and not anyone else. And if anyone else said that they could, they are probably fake or charlatans. Yeah, he went there. He, he said that. Red flags. <laughs> Damn, there's so many that uh, after a while you couldn't even dodge them anymore. Um, we basically had to suppress them, which uh, is a bit of a red flag in itself, right? There was a lot of bullying, and I had quite a few people reach out to me um, due to the bullying and mistreatment. Um, some of it being, you know, uh, open, um, public and some of it sort of, I guess, behind closed doors, private messages and everything like that. A high percentage of the complaints I heard uh, were actually about one of the mods that are still active. Um, 
So you best to be mindful of who you trust. So um, we go to the red flag. So one of the biggest ones for me, and possibly I'm not the only one that had to deal with this, um, I was a Hyperion musician, not just in my band, but I also created a whole new identity, uh, which I completely lent to Hyperionism. I became Scott Von Fire. All of my music was now Hyperion. So I thought, anyway. Over the years to come, I would receive several messages that were almost like warnings, uh, kind of hidden behind kind words. I was advised that my lyrical content needed to be toned down a touch. Um, like, like what the fuck? Like, seriously? Um, you want to censor me? Like, fucking censorship. Like, seriously. I actively protested the censorship of Morgue and Hyperionism on social media on many occasions. Yet, this guy needs to be censored. Like, fuck off. So the main songs of mine that received the calm, your fucking shit censorship warnings were part of the awesome How New Terror compilation project that Wrath put together. Musicians came together to spread the word of the movement. It was fucking fire. Like, we had so much fun. It, it was it was awesome. Like, more than I can explain. Yet, I had to chill the fuck out with my overthrowing the old world order content. When the fuck did Hyperionism give up the fight for a new world order? Like, serious, can you, can you tell me that? Because... Fuck me. I guess I should have seen the promise of a meritocratic future being dissolved into uh, this hyper shit dictatorship um, hidden behind a white lighter coffee club that was forming right in front of my eyes. You should do some hyper chats. Please submit your content for censoring here. Like so many red flags. There's so many. Like, we could go on and on about so much. But, for some fucking reason we suppressed it all. I'm glad it's coming out. I'm glad it's coming out. What red flags were there? Well, I think we've established that the whole bloody thing is one massive red flag at this moment. But for me in particular, um, the kind of hierarchy that was going on within Hyperionism, you know, there was definitely some people at the top who you couldn't question, couldn't criticise, couldn't say anything about if he did, you were blocked, unfriended, chucked to a group, all that good stuff. That pissed me off, that was a red flag. Um, another one which has been mentioned, but I think it's worth reiterating because it is a pretty significant red flag, is the fact that there was no real movement happening within this so-called movement. It was completely static and no nothing was actually being done. And, you know, the whole coronavirus and COVID was a very convenient excuse to not have meetups, not do anything concrete in the 3D. But now that that's passed and there's still nothing happening, there's no excuse anymore. And I asked them this three times last week and on Facebook, through my fake account, I asked them three times, you know, you keep talking about new terror, what plans have you got to bring this new earth, this new terror into actual 3D reality? And I could see him reading it three times and they ignored it three times. Maybe because I didn't send a super chat, maybe because I didn't pay to ask that question, but I think it just made him uncomfortable, you know? Um, so that was another red flag, just the lack of movement, the lack of anything actually really happening in the 3D reality and sometimes when you did offer suggestions or solutions to things you were just shot down. I remember suggesting when I was in the outer circle for a couple of months, I was like, I think we should all um, go to our local schools and universities. Um, and target, you know, 
political students, history students, um, people that science students, um, people that we think would be amenable to this information. Like if we all done that in our local area, we might be able to really, you know, make an impact with people that that are already thinking that way, and. A couple of people liked it and were like, yeah, it's a good idea, but there was nothing. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. You know, I was like, why aren't we doing this already? But nothing like that has ever been suggested. And there was just generally nothing being done. So that was another massive red flag. And the third was definitely the direction that his videos were going. The content was going right down the hill. It was becoming all about him becoming really obscure subjects like, you know, what does the the crown and the, the Statue of Liberty really symbolise? What does this Masonic text really say about Jesus? You know, and then the whole, uh, was Jesus actually Lucifer? Was Lucifer actually God? Was it like all these obscure subjects that I, they're vaguely interesting, but they, they don't really have anything to do with Illuminism or the or progressing as a movement for the working class, you know? Um, and I just didn't see the relevance. Plus the fact that he, the way he monetizes his YouTube channel to the absolute max, like, loads of millions of people have YouTube channels and you know a lot will have a Patreon for extra videos and stuff but I have never ever ever watched another YouTube creator that does lives and has you know has so many ways of collecting money in one stream you know super chats stars loyalty badges going up to different tiers like it's just, it's insane. And it's like, he's literally sitting there like a flipping slot machine, like a slot machine in Las Vegas, just collecting money for all these people that are addicted to him and they keep flinging money at him, hoping that they're going to get a triple seven and all their fruits in a row so that he'll give them a shout out, change the color, woo, put a blue black ground on, or, or write their name on the board, you know, it's like, if your life is so sad and empty that getting a shout out or a validation for that prick is the highlight of your week, you really need to evaluate what you're doing with your life. You know what I mean? The guy is doing nothing but sitting there collecting money. And I would like to address what um, Uriel said, his ex, in our statement saying, oh, he's not really like that. He's not about money. I back then, he wasn't. He was altruistic back then, he had good intentions back then. The PI approve of, of them back then, when when you were shagging him, but n not since. He has completely morphed into this totally narcissistic character in love with himself, in love with his own reflection. And all he cares about now is collecting as much money as possible. And that's it, you know? His videos are shit, they're repetitive, you don't learn anything new. There's no focus on any movement and he focuses on the most trivial stuff. You know, all the minority groups, not the 99%, not the working class. Um, yeah, that's pathetic. So that was a few red flags there. Red flags. Uh, a quote I heard on the internet the other day from a therapist, um, which I believe she got from a cartoon, is when you're wearing rose-colored glasses, all of the red flags look just like flags. And that is quite appropriate in this case. I just wanted to see the good. Um, we know that we have to look at the bad as well. So the final set of red flags. That final set came on July 26 when I met with Susan Mitchell to discuss duties that I would be assisting, um, be taking over and handling on for the Hyperion source. So um, starting out I would be mainly working in the background doing WordPress um, maintenance and keeping up with their, with their site. 
um, some content marketing, content repurposing, social media strategy for their Instagram, including making that content for it. Uh, mostly, you know, repurposing. We won't go into too much detail on that. And as well as eventually, they wanted me to, when I got my own equipment, be on their streams. Um, and so, also throughout the discussion, um, Susan revealed, well, eventually we would like to pay you, of course, for all of this, um, but the channel doesn't make very much, so, you know, don't expect too much. And I was, I was you know, I wasn't too bothered by that because at that time I thought that this was my only avenue to assist and spread aunt math and spread meritocracy which also by the way when I said the word meritocracy she Susan Mitchell was like we're using the word teleocracy now <laughs> um, so yeah it was just like what what <laughs> okay um I guess you can use that word. It's kind of strange, but anyway, I get off. I get off the line, and it hit me that Morg was not providing for his team of marketers um, because Morg is a social media influencer. Um, typically, the people doing these tasks for him, marketing his content, driving people to the website to buy merchandise and whatnot, typically you would pay those people something for their time. Um, not just promising them a new world order and pocketing the money. So, um, it was at that time I found out how little, how pathetically little more contributed as a leader to to people that I thought were you know in the in the the inner circle type people um, so it just it was a big a big fucking eye opener there were a lot of red flags that I've been ignoring over the years that I've um, buried in my subconscious and I started pulling them out one by one while I was reading the new Sinclair book, and it was painful. Um, Hyperionism had become such a huge part of my identity that I didn't want to think about them, but I'd like to share two of them. The first red flag was that we suddenly stopped having order meetings. They were held on Monday nights, but um, once Corey started live streaming on Mondays, uh, they said they were too busy, so we no longer had weekly order meetings. But Susan and Corey were meeting privately. The next red flag was about the Aunt Math series. I wrote the first few scripts and gave them to Susan to edit, and then I recorded the audio. When I gave her the fourth script, she told me, Oh, we're not doing it on that. She had already written it. She took over the writing and I just did the audio. I came to her repeatedly to tell her how uncomfortable it made me that we were deceiving people about me being the one teaching it. I was reading the comments on those videos and it was obvious that people thought I was writing the scripts. But over and over again, she kept telling me, oh, don't worry about it, it's fine, it's fine. But it wasn't fine and it worried me all the time but I kept my mouth shut. So it was actually fairly difficult to find the Mike Hockney books. Um, I had even reached out to Corey at one time and asked him um, for more information about the mathematics and how to expand my Hyperion knowledge. And the only thing Corey did was redirect me back to Corey's website. <laughs> so eventually I asked around to enough people and someone gave me a full list of all the author's names and I was able to find the books that way. How did I discover the source material? The Mike Hockney books, God series. Well, Wrath told me about the books at one point. Um, a few other Hyperians had mentioned it to me before as well, and I've read a few of them. I discovered the source material uh, by Mike Hockney, uh, the God series in particular. 
Um, because when I joined Hyperionism, there was a Facebook group and there was a pinned post at the top that said, this is mandatory reading for all Hyperians. You must read The God Game, which is the first book in the God series by Mike Hockney. So, you know, I was one of the fortunate ones that had uh, joined uh, so early that um, they were still paired. You know, Hyperianism was a, was a front or kind of like a funnel uh, for Illuminism, for, you know, for people to... Uh, come, come, you know, because of the, the allure of the celebrity talking and making edgy videos, you know, and then you join the Facebook group and you, uh, you discover the real material that it's built on the life changing material. I was one of the, the fortunate few who, um, got to experience that version of Hyperionism. In a casual mention on Facebook, my partner found a recommendation for Jack Tanner's Lucid Wakey, which ended up leading us to Mike Hockney's God Game. I discovered the AC material in about 2009. I was a moderator in IRC, and somebody posted a link to the site, and I was hooked. I was going there quite a bit before I ever knew about Morton. Uh, I have to say that I'm quite disappointed in what Morton has done. So, Mike Hockney. So on Facebook, uh, one of the Hyperion moderators actually um, posted a quote from Mike Hockney. And I was like, cool, like, wow, that's genius. Oh my god. Um, and I had to dig pretty heavily to find out, okay, this isn't even a real person. I was like, okay. Um, a luminous ghostwriter, what the hell? Oh my god. Uh, Morg never <laughs> indicated that this was part of um, the truth to what was going on. Or the source, I mean, of uh, his, his movement. And, um, yeah, I was just blown away just how, like, I was like, okay, everything Morg had done in his books was derived from Mike Hockney, and, uh, later I learned about Dr. Thomas Stark, and, yeah, that was just crazy. I was like, wow. And then I still noticed people were like, Morg is my favorite philosopher, and I was like, well, I just had no words. <laughs> How did I discover the source material from Mike Hockney? Well, it wasn't easy to catch because it's only in one of his many, many, many videos. At the end, there was a black screen that said, If you want to know more about this, you can read the God series, the 32 books from Mike Hockney. Also, two people who are now ex Hyperion, Rowan James and Wrath, also told me directly, We highly recommend reading the God series from Mike Hockney. How did you discover the source material? So I discovered the source material through other members of the community. I know Wrath mentioned it to me and a few other members had mentioned some other titles. It wasn't really posted about or made aware of. Um, I only learned about it through other members of the community. How I was exposed to the source material, the material um, from the Pythagorean Illuminist, uh, and all of the writers from the Armageddon Conspiracy website is that uh, through what I joined, there was a required reading of the first book in the God series. Um, I do remember it linked to some of Morg's initial content that I read, that I had uh, watched, and uh, through debating uh, the moderators in the group and them. Um, linking me the uh, books. How did I discover the source material written by Mike Hockney? Um, it was a few people inside the movement um, who shared some Mike Hockney books with me and um, through WhatsApp and a few other places and I got reading them and that's where I discovered that this material especially ontological mathematics, is far older than just Morg. Um, and that's what got me into the God game. It got me into Dr. Thomas Stark. 
I now almost have the whole collection of the Pythagorean Illuminati books um, in my bookcase. I discovered Hockney in the associated AC website, the Armageddon Conspiracy, uh, back in 2014. After reading that first article, I was like, it was a, a nuke went off inside my mind. Like, I had finally found what I had been looking for for years. In the earlier days, there was a lot of discussion of other material, particularly the God series. So I bought the God, the God game and read it, and it was clear to me that Corey's book was basically just a dumbed down version of Hockney's and other people's material. However, at the time, I thought he had the blessing of the AC to use their content in this way, but I see now that I was wrong. I first bought the Kindle version of The God Game by Mark Hockney um, a couple of years ago. God series was a hot topic in the Outer Circle group. Awesome book. It literally blew my mind. Corey's books are like the kindergarten version of this book. Also found the AC website around the same time. At that point, I had an understanding of where the foundation of Hyperionism had come from. I discovered the original source material at the Armageddon Conspiracy website back in 2011. Then I read The God Game by Mike Hockney. Wow. By the end of the first chapter, I knew this is it. This is where it's at. No bullshit. No hoodie in the blowfish. That couldn't be clearer in my mind. If you haven't already, I recommend at least read the first chapter. If you're not on the edge of your seat and gross with excitement, there's something wrong with you. How did I discover the source material in Mike Hockney? I was at work one day having a discussion with a co-worker and he made the comment that the world is ruled by elite families. That intrigued me. I went home that evening. I googled elite families and the first thing that came up were my two favorite words that I always failed to combine, Armageddon conspiracy. I knew before I even clicked on it that I had discovered something of great significance. You talk about being correct with my intuition. I was part of the Outer Circle Facebook group and I saw posts about the God series and the Truth series here and there, but I never really took the time to look into them until later on when uh, Moore did a book reading live stream where he read a little bit of the PI's work and kind of talked about them. So uh, after that stream, I started looking into the PI and I found uh, the AC website and I read the God game and I started to realize that Morg's work was just a dumbed down version of this work. And uh, around the start of 2021, I began to feel like I had completely outgrown Morg's channel. Uh, I had been watching almost every live stream twice a week for almost a year and I really learned, I rarely learned anything new. It was all just Morg uh, making the same points through different books and different trends, uh, spending way too much time in the chat, often hours before he would even start the topic. He would demand a certain number of likes before starting the topic, and it all just felt really fake and that he had become out of touch with the community and was really just trying to pander to new people. Um, so I stopped watching Morg's channel and started really studying the God series books and was working on my own self-actualization. Um, at this point, I did still consider myself a Hyperion, and I was unfortunately still giving money to Morg's Patreon and YouTube uh, membership because he had really helped me, and I felt like he could still uh, help new people come to find this information, and I thought that he had the support of the PI. Um, how did I discover the source material written by Mike Hockney? I was actually one of the lucky ones. I discovered uh, the God series by Mike Hockney back in 2013 or 2014. I can't quite remember. Uh, I was sent a message by someone called Jonathan Holm, which whose account is now just gone. Um, he sent me a message saying I should check out the Armageddon Conspiracy website and the God series book and I books and I did and it was amazing. Five, how did you discover the source material written by Mike Hawking? Uh, while stu still studying history at UCLA, 
I was doing some independent research on the Illuminati. Um, to my surprise, I came across the AC website and ultimately bought all of the God series by Mike Hockney on Amazon uh, for Kindle. I have since read practically everything I can get my hands on from Mike Hockney and his, uh, you know, fellow authors. How did I discover the source material written by Mike Hockney? Um, I discovered the material from the Illuminist study groups in 2016 uh, when I was recruited by Knox Parganatis. Um, from there, I read the God series, The God Game by Mike Hockney. It was a chock full of knowledge, uh, unlike anything I had ever imagined, uh, since uh, this type of knowledge was never taught in schools. Far much more in depth than Corey ever could have. So, there you go. Um, all these writers are the original uh, content from which Corey had plagiarized. The source material is how I learned more about uh, Pythagoras, Hegel, Leibniz, Nietzsche, Kant, and many others. Uh, and now I'm reading Without the Mob There Is No Circus by David Sinclair. Uh, which exposes all the nasty plagiarizing scheme that Corey was up all along with other shocking details of their collaboration uh, with Corey uh, a few years ago. How did I discover the original material, source material, by Mike Cockney? Well, that was back in early 2013. I had been having a lot of spontaneous um, astral projection experiences. It was happening every single night to me um, for months on end which you know many people can spend years trying to astral project and they, they don't manage it once. This was happening to me. I was being blasted into space and all sorts and it was mental and it was obviously like a concern. <laughs> I was like, what is happening here? Why is this happening to me? I'm not even trying. Um, and so I, I just wanted to research about it and I seen uh, one of the articles on, when I done a Google search, I went far back, or oh, you never look at the first couple of pages. I think I went to page nine, because that's my favorite number. And one of their articles came up and within five minutes of reading it, I knew I had stumbled across something totally life-changing and it just blew my mind. I could not stop reading the whole site. I think I read it in 10 days. Um, I had a bit forced, totally sleepless. That's all I'd done. I just read the whole site until it was finished. And my life's never been the same since, in a good way. So that's how I discovered the source material. How did I discover the source material written by Mike Hockney? It didn't take long. Um, many in the community were posting uh, quotes from, from the God Game series. And myself, as an avid lifelong reader, um, it didn't take me too long to get through Morg's tiny little books. So once I found out there were more books, there was more information to consume, uh, naturally I was quite excited to find that and began my journey at that time. So I would say maybe six or seven months into being exposed to Hyperionism, so about mid-2018 or so. Um, and I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that I did because it made me realize that Hyperionism was just a tiny introduction um, to ontolog ontological mathematics and a very, very tiny introduction to a meritocratic system. So there you have it. While I was preparing for the Intro to Hyperion Mathematics series, Corey told me there was a book they wanted me to read called The God Game by Mike Hockney. And as soon as I started reading about what existence is, which is at the very beginning of the book, it all seemed so obvious and I really did feel like I was remembering. I was sitting on my bed, uh, leaning over my iPad where I was reading it from, and I kept having to wipe my tears off the iPad. Um, the experience was that intense. I 
I must say that my decision to leave the movement was a very difficult one. I had put so much time and effort. Anyone who knows me knows that this was my passion. I was dedicated to the cause. Um, I realized though that I was losing my identity to Hyperionism and that I was also clinging to a movement that's not moving anywhere. The only thing that's moving is all the money to Corey's pocket. And that's not a very meritocratic thing to do. Uh, and also, I mean, no one can self-actualize by remaining stagnant. So I'm out. I am no longer Hyperion. Why did I leave? Hyperionism. I left because Morgan's is plagiarizing other people's work. And they're not waking up the world the way they promised. They promised that the world would change if they get this much money. <laughs> Bull. Well, I, I left Hyperionism uh, uh, because the the authors of the ontological mathematics mike hockney and uh all the other authors uh associated with illuminism uh have have revoked permission uh have revoked morg's permission to use their material and you know i'm not gonna be in a cult that's not backed by ontological mathematics you, you know what i mean i knew it was a cult i was okay with it because the whole point was to spread aunt math. <laughs> and now that that's not happening, I'm not going to be in a cult. Like that's uh, that's an insult to my intelligence. I left Hyperionism because I found out Corey is hiding the PI and the source material, distorting their philosophy for his own personal gain and trying to manipulate people with out of context quotes. When the PI made the accusations against Morg, that was it for me. Nothing else to do with Hyperionism. I drew the line at that point. Uh, what made me leave was <laughs> an open letter by Thomas Foster, which is uh, this interesting criticism on Hyperionism. And guess what happened to him when he put that out? He was banned and um, told to, you know, he was blocked by Hyperionism. Which, uh, when I found out about that and I read it and it made a lot of sense, and then I heard he got blocked, I was like, okay, <laughs> that's enough for me. I don't want to be part of something like that. I was confusing and uh, unfortunate. Um, I was kind of still one foot in. I was, My perspective was, hmm, maybe they could change their culture for the better. Maybe they could make improvements. Like, maybe it's not, maybe it hasn't gone completely to shit. Um, but as we know now, uh, David Sinclair's new book il illustrates why it has gone to shit. So now I'm completely out of the movement. I consider myself 100% Illuminist, uh, which is the, the original movement that Morg actually was sanctioned by to be the public face of. So, yeah. I got the hell out of there, and now we're trying to take that bastard Cory down. <laughs> Why did I leave Hyperionism? Well, to make a long story short, uh, Hyperionism has nothing left to offer me. Like I said, the entire movement just revolves around Morg and nothing else. I haven't learned anything new in Hyperionism for months now. I used to have a little note p notebook where I was taking notes in every single live stream, but over these past few months I haven't learned anything new, and Morg just doesn't have anything to say anyway. Most of what they do say is just the same old thing repeated and whatever. What made you leave Hyperionism? So for one, I left because of the plagiarism. Um, the second reason I left was because of Morg um, not addressing anyone's questions, not 
I mean, he made a statement, but it only addressed certain portions of the book. It, it, it's like he completely disregards any questions regarding this issue. Um, for the loyal supporters who, you know, have been supporting his work for, for years and it's just disregarded, um, that was like a really big thing for me. Um, the third thing that um made me leave was that i noticed that the material the videos have become diluted um with um super chats hanging out in the chat um people wanting shout outs um it just is hours long it the and the material is suffering because of it i had been um kind of distancing myself from hyperionism more and more because what initially drew me to um, to Hyperionism was the information that Morg was bringing to the table in his videos about the mathematical nature of reality. And that is what um, drew me to Hyperionism. Um, but I saw that it was, you know, becoming more so than what it already was, more of just this social gathering get together. And yeah, that's fun, but that's not really where I am in my life right now. I kind of, I want to get into the heady things and I want a community of people to which I can talk about these heady meta things with. <laughs> um, and so I was distancing myself and just um, trying to, to uh, engage with the source material in my own way uh, because it, Hyperionism was, distancing itself further and further away from Illuminism to which everything that, you know, brought in, uh, excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, Hyperionism had been seemingly distancing itself from the source material. And that was everything that I was initially interested in. Um, I didn't really care anything about like actualizing power self, mirror self and all that stuff. Um, I didn't come here as part of a self-help type thing. I came here to understand uh, ontological mathematics and the ontological mathematics system and the answer that it gives for what reality truly is and how we can know it is that way. I didn't care about like self-help and self-development. That's not why I came to the group. So. Uh, naturally, I was distancing myself because of that. What made me finally put the nail in the coffin was, of course, uh, what um, uh, the AC writers and the Pythagorean Illuminists had divulged to us all, which was that Morg was simply pocketing our money and leading us on. Um, Hy Hyperionism was no longer affiliated with the source material and Morg was simply just using that material to create their own cult, social club, lifestyle movement, whatever it was. He was plagiarizing the material and I feel like there's no integrity in that. And the group wasn't serving me anymore. And why should I be in a group that is no longer serving what I originally was interested in? which is understanding ontological mathematics. Um, what made me leave Hyperionism? Well, I was forking out a lot of money um, on Super Chats, on Patreon, on um, subscription to the YouTube channel just to get the little emoji to say, hey, look at me, I'm one of you guys. Um, and it started all becoming just about Morg and there was no movement. There was only a cult and that's all it ever was. And they admitted it from the start. So as soon as I saw the moderators leaving, that was a major red flag for me. Um, after, after just recently seeing Wrath, um, leave and the latest Hail New Terror album that he was creating and I was going to be a part of um, 
I had created a song for Hail New Terror. Um, as soon as I, that all fell apart, I, my eyebrows were sticking up and I was thinking, yeah, uh, something's up here. And then Rowan left as well. Some of the best minds of Hyperionism were escaping and I was like, what's up? And that's what led me to the Armageddon conspiracy website, which Morg took down. Um, but then I realized that all the work was plagiarized. Um, and it's all about one person's gain from as much money as he can get. It's not a movement. It's not um, a life-saving meta-caratical... Me me meta what's the word? <laughs> Meritocratical um, movement that would take over the world and actually, you know, we had ideas of political parties starting meritocratical movements and all this stuff in the works, but that's what Hyperionism is not about that. It's not even about self-actualizing reason within yourself. It's just about how much you can obey Morg. So I'm out. I'm Maddie Kling and I'm no longer Hyperion. I left Hyperionism because of Morg's self-serving deceit and his lack of respect for all those who gave everything to Hyperionism. Um, he hid the fact that he no longer had the authority to continue using the work of Mike Hockney, but he continued to do so at, mind you, a great profit for himself. He basically stole their work to make a killing. Thousands of dollars per video. When I learned that Christina was no longer with Hyperionism, and then I found out Rowan was also gone, I realized I had to do some research and figure out what's happening here. When I discovered that the AC not only did not support Corey, but accused him of outright plagiarism, I realized I probably made a grave error in believing him. His response to Sinclair was so cringy. I read Sinclair's book and I do not believe it is the work of a racist or homophobe. Corey took things out of context because he was desperate. But let's talk about the treatment of Christina and Rowan. Someone called the police on Rowan and the FBI on another former Hyperion. I believe it was Corey or one of his minions. Who else could it be? And even if it wasn't, he hasn't said anything about it, meaning he's sanctioning it. This is how you treat people who devoted years of their lives to your mo movement for free, mind you. Turns out it's not even your movement, Corey. Shame on you. I actually read The Dark Triad by Steve Madison earlier in the year. I think my spider senses started tingling around that time. Then when the pie started posting their opposition to Hyperionism, and drew that line in the sand, I chose. I'm already comfortable with being ex-Hyperion and I don't need the fucking hug or the fucking sword for that matter. And I'm angry, angry about the deception. How can Hyperionism possibly continue without the foundation it was built on? I stepped back from Hyperionism many times, and like many, had the gut feeling Corey was not doing his duty promoting the God series, the ideologies he built his social media presence on. On one occasion, Corey actually replied to one of my complaints. I received a lame Patreon fan video that did not address anything at all but stroking his inflated ego. I reluctantly stuck with Hyperionism, believing it was backed by the authors of the God series. Silly me. David Sinclair's book, Without the Mob, There Is No Circus, put the final nail in the coffin, so to speak. I highly recommend it. What made me leave Hyperionism? Well, I always had a red flag. Um, Thomas Foster came out with his open letter in 2020 um, exposing that the movement was being infected by Ian Rand right-wing bullshit. <laughs> That's just not good, man. Come on. Ian Rand, um, then 
A few years later, he starts to liberalize it. And right from the get-go, he capitalized it. Mark and... Mark, yeah, Morg. Morg infected the movement with right-wing ideology and left-wing ideology and capitalism, which umbrellas both of them. Me, I don't like Republicans, I don't like Democrats, I don't like liberals, and I don't like conservatives, and I don't like capitalism. It's all bullshit. So when I condemn left-wing ideology, I'm condemning American left-wing ideology, not meritocracy left-wing. Uh, I officially ended my support of Hyperionism recently when I learned of Morg no longer having the support of the PI and how dishonest he was about it and how he mistreated uh, the top Hyperians who decided to leave and how he showed them no appreciation for the me many years of work that they put into the movement. It seemed like all of my suspicions about uh, this individual had been proven to be true. So what made you leave Hyperionism? As I've touched upon um, uh, on question number four, what made me leave Hyperionism was uh, just really the fact that really Morg was the main face. I, I just thought it was weird and I've never particularly liked Morg for myself. I mean, it's fine if other people like like them, but I, I just don't. I've personally just never been like a fan, so. Six, what made you leave Hyperionism? I ultimately became estranged from the whole movement right around the time that Thomas Foster's open letter to Hyperionism came out. I'd recently finished up law school and was preparing for the California bar exam, so I didn't really have much time to dedicate to Hyperionism anyway. However, it wasn't until I found out that Moore no longer had sanction from the PI to discuss ontological mathematics uh, that I ultimately repudiated Hyperionism. Uh, what made me leave uh, Hyperionism? I was basically turned off to everything. Uh, slowly but surely, I woke the fuck up. Uh, I also never felt any real appreciation for all the time and energy I put into as a video artist for this movement and for Corey. I didn't get much recognition for it. And uh, also buying the merchandise in his books was a waste too because uh, he never treated his VIP Hyperions well either who put in much more of the work to get the material out to the masses. Uh, some of them were sleeping in vans or in cars without a home. Um, he never compensated them for the work. Uh, a true predatory capitalist, yes. And uh, that's what he is. Um, so he's going against every meritocratic principle that there is. So when I found out that the mods were leaving um, and the AC had dropped all support of Morgue and Hyperionism back in 2020, that pretty much said it all. Yeah, I was pointed towards uh, David Sinclair's book, uh, Without the Mob There Is No Circus, and I was advised to stay objective. Uh, this book revealed a lot. I did read it twice, um, just because I wanted it to sink in, and I highly recommend reading the book, and you've got to read it two, three times, doesn't matter, you you need to read it, um, because basically it spells it all out. We've all basically been deceived by Morg and Susan for pretty much two years. What made me leave? Well, I'd already energetically left about this time a year ago um, because I could see things just weren't right and I thought the PI cannot possibly approve of this. And they'd hinted in a, a few of their past books that they weren't happy with certain stuff, but they'd never outright, you know, denounced more completely. So I was just waiting for that, like quite a few people, it, people that were acquainted with it, the AC site and the PIs work beforehand and who considered themselves illuminist before Morg even appeared in the scene. We were just waiting for the PI to bring out a really hard hitting book to absolutely trash him to pieces 
and it's happened. And as soon as it happened, you know, that's why it was so easy for so many of us to instantly proclaim ourselves the Luminous and put up the red banners because that's what we were waiting on. I know it must look like we just all jumped ship just because the PI told us to, but that wasn't the case at all. A lot of us had already at least energetically left and were just watching and waiting to see what the PI would say about the whole situation. That was certainly the case with me. You know, I'd already um, taken Hyperion out my bio way back at the beginning of the year. I'd unsubscribed to Mark at the same time. You know, I'd already left. So that's why I left. I was just waiting for the PI to confirm that what I was thinking and feeling was accurate. And I wasn't the only one thinking and feeling that. <clears throat> what finally led me to leave Hyperionism? Well, you recall I said I was being recruited to work on the Hyperion source at the time that the book Without the Mob came out. Um... So when it came out, I began getting messages from many Hyperians who were in their feelings. We'll just put it that way. Um, one set of those messages were very passive, aggressive, very... I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it's from one of the mods that's there. And it was actually his message. He gave me a little tiny paragraph snippet I needed from the book to go, Oh, that's what's going on. Because I was, I was being, you know, messages, all directions coming at me. And I'm just like, Oh my God, why are my friends like freaking out all of a sudden? Um, because I hadn't had a chance to dig into the material. So... Yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy, but mostly it's just that I will not enable a plagiarist. I won't enable somebody who would psychopathically take this material and use it for their own gain. That's not what I'm here for. It's not a part of my purpose, sorry. There are many reasons I left Hyperionism, and I'd like to share a few. First of all, once the order meeting stopped, we were out of the loop. I thought Corey was still working with the PI, but it turns out they hadn't spoken for almost two years, and Corey didn't tell us this until after they saw the AC's Bastille Day post. They shouldn't have withheld that from us. Here's another reason I left. This booklet was published in 2019, and I'd like to read a few quotes from it. We will annihilate the old systems, destroy the old rulers. Hyperions will remake the world and save it from destruction. We will abolish the rich elite. Since the publication of this document, how many videos and live streams have you seen that are specifically about these topics? These are the things that I want to focus on, which I don't see Corey focused on. What happened? What changed? David Sinclair's new book, Without the Mob, There Is No Circus, reminded me of who I am and what I stand for. I'm leaving Hyperionism to fight for the working class, the proletariat. I'm leaving to bring down the old world order. And finally, I felt like I was wasting my time modding and working for the Hyperion source. For the last 20 months, I've been fighting to produce more advanced aunt math to no avail. So now that I won't be volunteering so much of my free time to modding and the Hyperion source, I'm leaving Hyperionism to dedicate my time to continue studying ontological mathematics and finding ways to produce my own content. I donated to Corey's Patreon for at least four of those years that I was Hyperion. I have spent thousands in making my own marketing material 
the money spent now this one hits hard so five years times about ten dollars a month give or take some months I did 50 some months I did five um, on both YouTube and patreon and the books I bought all their books I bought t-shirts I bought their little pin I bought stickers on my own I bought business cards on my own I bought their little pamphlet a lot too so that's a lot of money spent for no reason because nothing's happened no change just more subscribers and more money in their pocket Oh, the, the money I spend on Hyperionism. Okay, so I met Morg uh, a few weeks after uh, talking to them. Uh, I was living in LA at the time. We had coffee and uh, it was fine. You know, it was cool. So I thought, wow, uh, I, I really am going to back this guy with as much support as I can. I came into some money and uh, I sent Morg $10,000 over PayPal. Uh, this is, of course... This is after I had found out that uh, it was supported by Illuminism. I had already been in the Facebook group. I had already finished the God game. And so I thought to myself, wow, the people that wrote this are really backing Morg. This is serious. You know, Morg deserves this money more than I do. Yes, it's my money, but Morg's going to kick ass with it. So here you go, you meritorious bastard. You know, I was all about it. Uh, I should have bought a car, you know, I haven't had a car in <laughs> years. <laughs> uh, certainly much more than that. I was on the sword tier of Patreon for a long time, you know, I got a signed sword, which I never received, by the way. I'm, I'm uh, not sure what happened there, you know. If, if you're gonna take a thousand dollars from somebody, because uh, it's it's two fifty a month. If you're gonna take that much money, you should like get tracking on the package. You know what I mean? Uh, I never received the sword. Um, super chats. Oh geez, you know, uh, a few weeks ago I sent three hundred ninety uh, sixty nine three six nine uh, super chat as kind of like a hint to Morg, like you know, like hey, remember the math? You know, uh, nothing. Not even and when I when I pulled out of Hyperionism, not even a thank you for anything. I have sent so much money, probably like fifteen thousand dollars, probably. Luckily, I only spent about two hundred dollars. How much money? Thousands, a couple grand at least. I was a regular supporter on Patreon monthly. Bought his books, produced a lot of material, patches paperwork, pamphlets, uh, too much money. I'm actually disappointed in myself. Uh, I would say I only spent about $100, maybe more, on books, super chats, subscriptions. Luckily, I just, I'm kind of broke, so <laughs> I wasn't able to spend that much. Uh, I, but when I was in streams, I would see people spend huge stacks of money, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I bought four of Morg's books on paperback. I bought the same four books on Kindle to have as backups and to support the author. I signed up for Patreon for a few months. I signed up for the YouTube membership. I sent a bunch of super chats. I bought some other merchandise, like a Triscale hoodie, a Triscale pin and a tri-scale wall flag. And altogether, over the course of a year, I'm down about $600 Canadian. I was um, subscribed to Morg's Patreon for two years. For the first year, um, I was subscribed at like $10 a month, um, but then I dropped it down probably like approximately the second year um, to $5. Um, I purchased the books, I purchased hoodies, I purchased t-shirts, I sent super chats here and there, so um, I, I don't know an exact figure, but it was a good bit of money that I spent um, towards the movement. I spent probably, you know, close to over $300, I'd say, supporting Hyperionism over the last five years. 
um, supporting him with $5. It could be anywhere from $300 to $600 because sometimes I was a $5, uh, most of the time I was a $5 supporter on Patreon, um, which I, my Patreon had said five years of supporting this, this person. And so, yeah, about $300 to $600. How much money did I spend on Hyperionism? Um, I probably spent about $2,000 in the four or five years I've been a part of it. Um, there were a couple of excited times where I splurged out, but I'm not made of money, so I, I'm, thankfully um, I didn't spend too much. Um, but if I had more money, I would have put it into Hyperionism. So I can see how people got duped into spending lots of money. I don't know how much money I spent on Hyperionism, but I supported not only Morg, but other content creators on Patreon for years and spent a considerable amount of money on like equipment for content creation. And then not to mention all my time for whatever that was worth. I have spent about $3,000 being a Patreon supporter of Corey. Patreon and YouTube was costing me about 50 bucks a month, plus t-shirts, trinkets, books, sucker chats. I didn't go down as badly as some. What I was spent was nothing in comparison. It's still cringy though. Corey does not need your fucking money to pay his rent. Stop it. Over the years, these Patreon donations sure did add up. It's close to $6,000. How much money did I give to Morg? I would say almost $2,000 off and on over four to five years. I gave Morg money through Patreon and his products. I had his t-shirts. Normally, I give my clothes to Goodwill or Vietnam veterans or numerous other charities that I donate stuff to. Those shirts were ripped up and used as oil rags. The books I bought from Morg went to one of my luminous friends in Canada because she collects books and I thought well she can have them even though she is one of the two people that condemned Morg from the beginning. She can have the books. She's not going to infect Canada with Hyperionism. She'll guard those books with secrecy. So how much money did I spend on Hyperionism? Well, I first joined Patreon three years ago when Morg first started it, and they made that very convincing video talking about if uh, just half of his supporters gave just a dollar of it, he'd be able to enact major world change right now. Um, I really believed in this, so I joined at the $5 per video tier, and later uh, upgraded to the $10 per video tier when they added that one to start giving out signed books. And so not only did I support Patreon for three years, but I also bought all of the books to make sure to have them signed. I bought a t-shirt, a hoodie, a bunch of pins, and some stickers. How much money did I spend on Hyperionism? I was subscribed to... Um... Faith Kills and Morg's Patreons for a few months. So I don't know really uh, how much money it would come to, but I have um, sent them money. And I stopped eventually because the way I see it is um, if we want to create change, we need to unify um, our actions, not our wallets. <laughs> Especially not into one person's account, but... Seven, how much money did you spend on Hyperion? Uh, I can't adequately say, as I haven't done a full audit of my finances over the last five years or so, but I would estimate somewhere between six and eight hundred dollars. Uh, this includes books, events, Patreon support for a time, and merchandise, of course. Um, how much money I spent on Hyperionism. I spent in five years almost close to about a thousand dollars. 
Uh, it's not as much as wrath. It's not as much as um, what others have, have spent. But, you know, it's still a waste of time and energy and money that I could have used for other things. Um, so, you know, when you count the Patreon $5 a month and the YouTube, the merchandise books, the trip to L.A., yeah, you know, I could have saved that money and put it away for something uh, that I really needed. Uh, it's nowhere as, again, it's nowhere as near as much as, as, as others, um, but it still feels like waste. Uh, so what has Corey done to wake up the world with our donations? Um, he just has better props for his silly videos. Um, uh, nothing else really. And, and a new haircut with disco lights. Disco lights, yeah. Changing colors every time a super chat over fifty dollar donation comes in. Cha ching! There goes your 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 color change. Ooh, yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. I spent roughly three to four thousand um, dollars um, Patreon support, books, merchandise, you know, pins, t-shirts, all that stuff. Um, even advertising sort of pamphlets and stuff. Uh, I never paid for the YouTube membership, uh, for the emojis, etc. That was it. That was another red flag for me. Um, that was just like, you know, enough's enough. I, I did not get into that. Um, I spent a lot upgrading my own personal equipment, uh, software for content creating. Um, thankfully I can still use that. Um, I would say the worst cost for me, um, several of my close friends, uh, is the loss of my art, my music. Um, five years of creativity thrown in the trash because it's Hyperion thing. Um, that cost hurts the most, and that's the one that has made me pretty fucking angry, to be honest. Um, how much money did I spend? Fortunately, not too much. I didn't waste too much money. Um, I calculated it was probably just about £200 max, mainly through Patreon. I only downloaded one of his books, The Metaphorical Suicide. Um, that was shit. You know, I can understand if you are just reading Morg's books and you've not read anything but the PI first, then you might think, yeah, oh, he's, he's pretty intelligent, he's a, a pretty good author. But if you've already read the PI's works first, and then you, you read Morg's stuff, that, I mean, the contrast is huge. Um, there's no comparison. Really, Mark is not anywhere near the caliber of the PA. How much money did I spend on Hyperionism? Um, over a five year period, let's say including Patreon and books, and I bought a shirt and I bought a hoodie, which I don't really count that as a waste. Those are, are things that I would need anyway. I need clothing to cover my body. Um, and I need books to nourish my mind. Um, I, I probably spent a couple hundred dollars. Um, I didn't really do too many super chats. I thought those were kind of strange. Um, a friend recently pointed out that, you know how Warwick spends an hour in the beginning of his live streams um, getting likes to feed the algorithm and then he's getting all these super chats. It's like pl passing around that time where they pass around the collection plate in church. <laughs> Um, I never actually went to church and had to experience that. I'm just aware of it. But yeah, if, if that relates to you, then then take note. Um, that first hour, Morg's passing around that collection plate and you're lining his bank account and he is not supporting his support crew. I didn't keep track of how much money I spent on Hyperionism. I was on um, Corey's Patreon. I paid to join the YouTube channel for a while. I bought um, books, that t-shirts, uh, pins, and a poster. Um, so I'd estimate hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I also volunteered 
countless hours of my time these past five years. And it surprised me to find out that some people didn't realize that Corey wasn't paying the moderators. I would like to say to any Hyperion that is watching this to please take the time to think for yourself uh, without any background noise and also to read the book uh, without the mob there is no circus through the eyes of reason instead of emotion because I know when I first read it my emotions were sky high and I finally I took the time to think for myself and when I was ready I actually called a good friend of mine to go over the book and when I reread parts of the book it was like I was reading an entirely different book um I was shocked uh of course I am a feeling type I am very aware that I'm a feeling type so I know that I have to calm my ass down as I can get way too emotionally involved. And that's what I had to do. I had to shut off and block out all the background noise and then actually read the book. So, and I also I encourage every single one of you to understand your personality type and understand how you process information. Don't let cherry pick quotes from the book fire up your emotions and make a irrational decision. So, I am again Sethra Lavode, the dialectical Black Rose, and I am not Hyperion. What would I say to the Hyperions watching right now? Please. Use your critical thinking skills and ask yourself what's changed, if anything, in the world since you've subscribed to Morg. Has Morg done anything besides donating to charity here and there? And why would you want to support someone that's plagiarizing other people's work? I hope you have a blessed day. <laughs> if, if you're Hyperion and watching this, um, you know, nobody loved Hyperionism more than, more than I did. I, I promise you that. I promise you that. Uh, I was all about it until the very, very end. And uh, I, I even called Morg. I called Morg on Zoom. I, I pleaded, you know, like, hey, I really need to talk to you. I'm not trying to bother you. I know you're busy, but like, fuck, if I don't say this and this ship goes down, I'm going to feel like I didn't do my part. I loved Hyperionism. Uh, and I, uh, I, Morg accepted the call and we talked and... Uh, Morg laughed at me. I was like, hey, you know, they're going to pull Aunt Math. You know, they're, they're, you're not going to have Aunt Math anymore. And Morg was like, ha, ha, ha. You know, like, don't be ridiculous. You know, something like that. You know, laughed at me. So it's like, all right, all right, dude. You know, I tried. Uh, you know, I just want you to know that about Morg. Um, I want you to know that about me, too, that uh, I was absolutely dedicated you saw the the reason you know who i am is because i was all about it i made videos to raise morale i tried to make you know goofy little songs you know that uh you could just have a good time with um and i also made some serious content i was one of the only i think i was the only person to stand up to some trolls and i made a i made a whole video uh taking down a troll and that troll left everyone alone. So, you know, I, I protected Hyperionism with my teeth. I was so defensive uh, for Morg. I was protective. Um, I, I did everything I could, you know, everything I could. I made songs. I ran, um, so I ran this group called Hail New Terra and it's just, it was like a public service for Hyperion musicians. 
where we all kind of like, you know, uh, shared each other's fan bases and promoted each other. And, uh, you know, we put out a compilation uh, for Shadow Season. Uh, you know, one song per artist. It, it was it was fun. You know, we had a good time, and I, I did that because uh, I realized there was a lot of other musicians, uh, and I thought a community of those would be nice. I, I did so much for Hyperionism, and uh, you know, I just want you to know that I'm not some irrational, you know, uh, emotional person that. Uh, can't, uh, is not dedicated to changing the world or whatever, you know? I'm not. Um, I'm just not gonna be in a cult that doesn't have aunt math. That's stupid. To any Hyperians watching, stop romanticizing your connection with Morg. Use the logic and reason he preaches. Look to Corey's source material. Read the PI's literature. See through Corey's charade. To any Hyperians watching, get the fuck out now while you can. This is not going anywhere. If you cannot see that after this many years. Alright, what would I say to Hyperians watching? Uh, skip the middleman. You don't need Mork. Just go right to the source. Learn about the PI, the Pythagorean Illuminati. Don't be put off by the word Illuminati. Um, go learn. Go read their books. There's like 200 books. They're frigging brilliant. They're, they're amazing. Um, and everything Morg has ever done, basically, was derived from their shit. So, <laughs> you don't need Morg. He's irrelevant. If you want Morg, you're just worshipping a person. Um... And yeah, Illuminous, we accept anyone. We're for the working class, we're for revolution. So come join us, we don't give a shit if you're, what your sexuality is, what your gender is. Identity doesn't matter, all that matters is merit and quality and beauty and making a beautiful society where everyone is, has an equal chance to be amazing. Um, so come join the right movement, make the right choice. Don't support this psycho, influencer who just wants your money. It's fucking bullshit. What would I say to other Hyperians watching? Be careful and listen to what Morg says carefully. If you ever feel like you got anything out of my videos, consider supporting on Patreon, you know? I help you, you help me. It's a feedback loop. Is it a feedback loop or is it codependency and manipulation just with a fancier word attached to it. You know, you need me for this information, and I need you to pay my rent. It's a feedback loop. So yeah, pay attention. If you're going to keep watching Morg, pay close attention, both to what they are telling you and to what they are not telling you. And also ask yourself this, if so many people who are heavily involved with Morgan Hyperionism deeply for many years can suddenly just up and walk away, give Morg the finger. You gotta ask yourself, what's making these people leave? It's not about what's making people stay, what's making people leave? Think about that part. I'd just like to add that I've learned a lot more from reading Mike Hockney and the God series as well as the other Illuminati writers than I ever have from watching Morg. And Morg, dude, I really don't have the time to sit there and hang out with you for like three and a half hours twice a week. I got stuff to do, okay? I'm busy. I would say please read David Sinclair's book Without the Mob There Is No Circus. I did notice some people mention in bits and pieces of the book. Um, it's important to read the full thing to really get the message that they're trying to express. Another thing I would say is try not to let your emotions cloud your judgment and rational thinking. Um, I know the movement was something that was really important to me and something that really helped me um, improve in my life and I do appreciate that but I, I have to look at it from a, a rational sense and, and not an emotional sense and I think that's really important and um, to come to your own conclusions uh, about My message to any Hyperians watching is read 
the God series by Mike Hockney, all 32 books as soon as you can. Really try to carve out time in your day. I'm going to finish it myself. Um, and I'm trying to reach this goal by the end of the year. And so um, that's all that I can say to you um, because you don't need a leader. You don't need a personality. You don't need this community of people who are just idolizing a con man. Um, you don't need to give this guy any more of your money. He's not helping create anything, uh, which was obvious when he switched the conversation from, oh, we can't have meet meetups or anything actualizing in real life because of the pandemic. And then when things opened up, that just kind of fell off the topic of conversation. It's pretty obvious that they're not trying to mobilize in any way. There is no movement to this. Um, as I've heard other Hyperians say, the only movement that's happening in the Hyperion movement is money moving into Morg's bank account. Um, so yeah, this you don't need him. He's a liar and a con. Um, you don't if you don't need a fake community. Uh, what you can find community within yourself. Uh, you can find community through engaging with the, the growth of all of you, different parts of you. Um, and sometimes that requires, you know, really digging into the material and sitting with it and thinking with it. Um, and, and sorry, well, thinking. Um, but yeah, you can cut all that bullshit out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, cut this up and make it how you want it. But um, yeah, I mean, I would just tell them, uh, completely stop supporting this guy. Keep your money. Um, put it towards something that will help you. If you're wanting to learn more about ontological mathematics, about how we know that reality is mathematical, read the God series by Mike Hockney. Start off with uh, 32 books, then jump onto that truth series, which is 18 books, and um, really sit with the material and um, yeah, that way you'll actually be able to have substantial conversations with people and rather than shallow connections that are based off of some cult personality, um, you'll be able to have meaningful uh, conversations that are surrounding hopefully something that you're interested in. And if you're a Hyperion and you're not interested in the source material, then possibly rethink why you're Hyperion and that may be alone enough for you to leave when you realize that there you have a shallow connection to a bunch of mumbo jumbo contentless you know bullshit I don't know however to call it like it's just without the source material without ontological mathematics to which Morg had zero um, part in developing without that then what is Hyperionism? Just the, the ramblings of some blonde guy who really has to piss a lot during his live streams. Owen oh, loves money. What would I say to any Hyperions watching? Um, I would have to say a cult is a cult. Um, they only worship the leader. If all the ideas that they come up with um, about changing the world, it's all a fallacy. It's all about benefiting the leader and only the leader. Um, so get out while you can. And if you really choose to stay, ask very rational questions towards Morg. The more people that do that, he can't ban everybody for asking questions. So ask him the rational questions that would make him have to question um, his existence and do it often. Um, question 
what the source of Hyperionism is. Or question just why he decided to call it a cult. They're just some examples. But uh, question everything, guys. Because this is what it's about. Morg and his dollars. He doesn't want to change the world. And I'm Matty Kling, and I'm not Hyperion. See you guys. For any Hyperions watching, just study the warning signs of a cult and apply that to the Hyperion movement. Very importantly, study narcissism and its warning signs. And of course, just study the source material. Read Mike Hockney and all the associated authors. Get it straight from the horse's mouth. You don't need Morg for anything. Unless you're into fan clubs, then go nuts. To any Hyperion who may see this, please stop your blind faith in this person. You are a lemming. You are the very thing Corey despises. If you do the reading, and if you think logically and reasonably, you should see there is something very, very wrong here. Misrepresentation appears to be the new Hyperion zeitgeist. I am, of course, referring to the statement on the Hyperion Source website. If you haven't read Without the Mob, There Is No Circus by David Sinclair, and I mean the whole thing, then your argument against the AC is irrational and based on hearsay and appeals to authority. Henpeck quotes from this book are being presented out of context. Challenge yourself. Be objective. Ask yourself why a large number of very intelligent people have hyper-exited. What is the sufficient reason for that? <clears throat> Reassess your biases. Is there meritocracy within Hyperionism? Is the leader of Hyperionism a communal narcissist? Feel free to look that up and start ticking boxes. From Without the Mob There Is No Circus, and I quote, Here's another simple way to identify a cult. Could the movement continue seamlessly with a meritocratic individual from its ranks promoted to the leadership role? Or would the movement collapse instantly if the current leader were no longer around? If so, it's a cult. It's always the same. Every influencer is in the cult game. Unquote. Do not give Corey your money and do not waste your time and effort supporting him or his weird ideas. I learned nothing about merit, idealism or ontological mathematics from Corey at all. So Hyperians, ask yourself this, do you follow Corey or his botched teaching stolen from the God series? Be honest now, if the answer is Corey, you are in a cult. If it's the teachings, then go straight to the original, the God series with a capital G by Maya Hockney, the Truth series with a capital T by Dr. Thomas Stark. If these books initially appear intimidating by the intellectual scope of the subjects entailed, pick any book that may suit your taste. Be sure to check out the books by Dr. Cody Newman, Jack Tanner, Steve Madison, David Sinclair, and of course, Michael Ford's book, The Case for Meritocracy. Dare to know. What would I say to Hyperions? I would say get out. You're in a cult. Morg is a high priest, and Susan is his footman, or a butler of sorts. Susan's not a high priest. She's Morg's butler. She bathes him, and she clothes him like the emperor she looks at him as. Read Mike Hockney, read Dr. Thomas Stark. You will realize that their writings are way higher than Morg's. And their writings are way higher than Morg doing his videos. Get away from the videos. Get away from Morg's half hour videos. Get away from listening to him for eight minutes, say hellos, and collect shit tons of money saying hello as the months and the years go by. Don't give Morg any money. Stop watching the videos, read books. Books will hammer the message into your mind a lot better than these stupid videos Morg makes. Stay away from Hyperionism. Study Illuminism. You are, your mind will be far better. Morg doesn't increase the brain waves of your mind. The Illuminati does. Morg never really once touched my neocortex. The Illuminati do. So fuck you, Morg. The sooner you fail, the better. To all the Hyperians watching, I want to say please 
drop your emotions and use logic and reason to really analyze the situation. Uh, Morg has broken their promises. Uh, they now make almost $3,000 per creation on Patreon, plus thousands in Super Chats, and no change has been made except for upgrades to the videos, because apparently seeing his face in a better resolution is going to change the world. Um, yeah, no. This cult clearly only exists to feed Morg's ego and stop him from ever having to get a regular job. Corey is not going to create new Terra. They are perfectly happy staying in their cozy apartment, hiding behind the camera, lying, cheating, stealing, and taking advantage of the working class. You don't need them. Learn the material for yourself and save your money. I'm Z Interstar, and I am not Hyperion. So, eight. what would I say to any Hyperions watching? That's exactly what I'd say. Just stop giving your money away. Y you, you need it. Like, we all need our money. Like, <laughs> instead, contribute in a way that isn't money. Um, and yeah, like, I'm, I'm not saying people should stop hi identifying as Hyperion, because I don't think that's necessarily harmful. I just think that um, it's, it is fishy to have um, a singular face. Um, yeah, it's just, just, you know, use, use reason, use your, use your common sense, and um, save your money for yourself, for your own projects, for your own ideas, because you can't if there's anything that Hyperionism and the God series and Pythagorean Illuminism and all these things should have taught you by now is that um, you have everything you need within and you gotta reach within and find what it is about you, what are your strengths, and put that forward. So I hope this helps and thank you for listening. 8. What would you say to any Hyperions watching? I would say that you will be on the losing side of history if you remain Hyperion. That's all. What would I say to any other Hyperion watching? Uh, if you're a newbie, uh, use proper discernment. Look out for the red flags early on, on, which is what I didn't do at first, and I regret that. Um, uh, cognitive dissonance will make you ignore those red flags uh, and just leave. Leave it behind. Uh, leave the cult. Uh, like Adam Norris said, it's the familiarity factor of being narcissistically abused as a child. Uh, so pay attention to the signs of narcissism, as Rowan had said. Do a lot of self-reflection. Practice having stronger boundaries so that you can't be further manipulated. Uh, and get out before your wallet disappears and your sanity as well. Um, to Hyperions that have been in, in, in this, as long as I've been in, in this, stop giving your money away. Okay, um, codependency will have you holding on to an illusion. Uh, get out now and get therapy afterwards and read the original source from the PI books. It's authentic intellect, not pseudo intellect. Psychology 101 says the cult leader will say, look for me in your dreams. I will be there. Look for me in your dreams. I will be there. This is part of the conditioning. Uh, Corey has said this and other current, current uh, and another current mainstream cult leader, uh, Teal Swan, has also said this. Use real logic and reason and get out ASAP. Um, that is all I can say. And I am not Hyperion. To all the Hyperions uh, sitting in the front row for Hyper Toilet Time with your host, Morgi Poo, um, please stop giving this person your money. You don't need to pay for this shit. Um, as the saying goes, you can't polish a turd. Alright, so get up off your ass and flush the fuck up. Go out, 
get the God series, get the Truth series, and my personal favourite, uh, the Anti Elite series, one, one of the older series. Um, I really like that one. Uh, it's a lot of my music I got in trouble for <laughs> uh, was based on that series. There is an abundance of knowledge available, so best thing I could say is don't let Hyperionism hinder your optimization. Um, I do have one other important special note I want to make. Um, this one's actually very, very important, okay? Uh, when you start losing friends and losing family because... They don't want to be around your crazy, obsessed, fucking cult crap that you post everywhere, you talk about constantly. Um, they don't, if they're not interested, they don't want to hear it. And I went through that and kind of feel a little bit bad about the way I acted sometimes. Um, but I know my friends are still there. They've been contacted me. Um, just don't listen to anyone in the Hyperion community when they say that this is normal. It's everyone goes through it. Uh, you know, we all go through that, but everything's okay because we are now your new friends and your new family. Ah, like, fuck off! Don't like, don't fall for that trap. All right, it's it's not a nice one to fall for. All right, be smart. What would I say to Hyperians? It's kind of, it feels a bit pointless trying to talk to the ones that are left because it's just the dregs, it's just the absolute diehard hangers on, the feeling types that can see no wrong in Mark. And so as well as reiterating what's been said before about get your emotions out the way, look at the situation completely logically, rationally, um, read the source material, read the PI's material, read the, the God series, get your emotions out. Yes, I agree with all that. But I would also say, just look at the man, forget about Hyperionism and, and the PI. Just look at the man, more Corey, the way he treats people. Because the way that he's treated Wrath alone is despicable and unforgivable to me. It had me in tears. Like Wrath said, there was no one more dedicated to Hyperionism than him. He was more dedicated than Mark from day one, honestly. And, you know, the amount of the five years of the absolute utmost loyalty, dedication, time, love, yeah, love, a concept Corey knows nothing about. Um, that guy gave everything, and what did he get in return? For one, I didn't know this until I heard his video the other day, he was at the top tier of Patreon for years and didn't even get his sign sort. He's paid the equivalent for a, a bit, a thousand swords by now, and he's not even had one. And when he asked why, oh, it went missing in the post, how could a bloody sword go missing in the post? Seriously? Like, he didn't send it. So that's the type of person Corey is. He's not a man of his word, he's a thief. He, he's a liar. He didn't give what he was supposed to give. Um, he's... he's just one of the most despicable people I've ever come across. He has got no moral compass. He doesn't care. He's a user. He's like just a big black hole that just sucks everything out of people and gives fuck all back. And the, But the way he treated Wrath in particular was so terrible. Like laughing, laughing down the phone to him when Wrath phoned to question the situation and he was clearly distressed, and he just laughed, laughed. That's the type of person he is. That's the type of man he is. I wouldn't call him a man. I mean, he he's non-binary, so he's not a man. 
he's a single-celled amoeba to me. He's a piece of protoplasm. He's a piece of shit. He's nothing. And to treat people with somebody who... You will not hear anybody say a bad word about Raph. That guy is so genuine, so amazing. Everybody loves him. No one's got a bad word to say about him. You'll hear plenty of people say plenty of bad words about Corey, though, because he's not an amazing, genuine person. He is a liar, a user, a plagiarist, a con man, a trickster. And the way what he's done is just, it's honestly unforgivable. So I would look at Corey the man, yet forget both sides. Just look at his actions, the way he treats people, what he done to Rowan and Christina, phoning the police and FBI, all that shit. It's deplorable what he's done. And that's how you should judge him. Just as a person. Is he a decent character? Is he a good man? A good person? And if you still think he is after what he's done and how he's treated certain people, honestly, fuck you. Your, your moral compass is as non-existent as his. If that's the case, if you really think he's a decent guy and you're going to keep supporting him. And this pressure is not going to stop until that disgusting man and his cult are gone. So get used to it. And finally, I want to take this opportunity to thank the PI for one, just releasing and giving us this amazing information and knowledge, and two, to apologize on Corey's behalf and, every, and all of our behalf, because we've all, had, we've all had a hand in this. No one is guilt-free in this situation. We've all been guilty to some degree and I'm ashamed of my part in it. Um, but I want to thank the PI for still having faith that some of us, as Illuminists, do really appreciate their work, are truly grateful for it, and would never dream in a million years of doing what that cunt's done. Um, so thank you for still having faith in some of us, and I hope we can do you proud from this moment onwards and never ever bring such shame to your name again. So yeah, that's all I want to say. I am Julie, I am a luminist, I am definitely not Hyperion. Thank you for listening. What would I say to any remaining Hyperions? Um, I would say I know that many of you have, have expressed that you're feeling bullied that maybe you're feeling abandoned and you're feeling hurt by those of us longtime Hyperians that have left. The reason we left is because we are not willing to enable the suppression of, of human enlightenment, which is what happens when you stay with Hyperianism. Because Morg no longer has the the permission to speak on Aunt Matthew, you will begin to see that he's only speaking on things that are in the public domain. So things like Masonic texts, with which are deeply rooted in misogyny. Um, yeah, just really esoteric old things. He's no longer going to be able to to speak on ontological mathematics because of the plagiarism. Um, and, the, and they, you know, as the copyright holders, they, they, you can revoke, you can revoke somebody's permission to use your material, um, which it, it sounds as though that's, that is clearly what has happened. At this point, we can't deny that. Uh, Morg's permission to use ontological mathematics has been revoked, and at this point he's saying, oh, don't pay attention to them, they just want attention. Um... You know, when you read a narcissist's accusations, if you read them very carefully, you will actually see it's a signed confession. Um, Morg needs your attention. He needs it to fill his bank account. He does not run a meritocratic order, even within his own, own domain of Hyperianism. He keeps you there 
during the live stream in trauma bond through pity that he has experienced RTS. Have you experienced RTS? I've experienced RTS. Hey, let's get some more likes. Let's get some more super chats. Oh, thank you so much. I'm just so comfortable. So what you're experiencing is a, a, a cycle of trauma bonding with him. Um, and as long as you stay there, you are enabling his behavior. Those of us that left, no more. We're not enabling his behavior. Um, and we're making show, sure making damn well sure, uh, we're making sure that um, there is a trail so that others know this is this is not the way. If you're only learning aunt math from morgue, you're holding yourself back because you're being cut off from the ontological mathematics texts, texts by the source writers. Um, you're willingly choosing to subjugate yourself to someone who would willingly suppress this information from being sent out into the world because he wants to make a pretty penny from it. He wants to swindle people as a social media influencer, as a guru. I know it hurts to realize you've been swindled. I know, okay? It, it hurts, but there comes a time where you have to make the adult choice, realize that not everything in life is going to give you a color change in the background or emojis in the chat and do the right thing and turn your back on Hyperionism. If, if you feel that leaving the community will cause trauma for you, I definitely encourage you to seek trauma-informed care. There are free RTS resources out there. A website off the top of my head is journeyfree.org. Anybody who knows any other RTS resources, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Um, and yeah, I, I wish you guys the best, but stop trying to say you know aunt math if all you know is is from Morg's tiny little dissertation on on what he learned from the the PI from the Armageddon conspiracy writers okay thanks to any Hyperians watching this I want to share something with you early on in my time as an order member sometime in 2018 I think I remember having some questions about something that was going on but I was uncomfortable asking it at one of our weekly order meetings. So I went to a higher ranking order member and asked them privately, but they wouldn't give me an answer. Instead, they said, Christina, we don't tell you everything. So to the Hyperians watching this, I want you to think about that. If they're hiding things from the order members, what are they hiding from you? Please strip away any biases you may have and read Sinclair's new book carefully and objectively. Corey always talks about using reason and logic. Now is the time to use them.